It's time for a Drummer Nation. I'm proud to now welcome Sabian Symbols as an official sponsor of Drummer Nation. The former Crescent Vanguard series are now widely available as part of the legendary Sabian HH models. HH symbols are traditionally hand hammered into shape and sound by Sabian craftsmen. Each symbol receives between 2,000 and 4,000 hammer blows, resulting in increased musicality, tonal complexity, and unmatched sonic texture favored by drummers in the know for generations. Find out more about the Vanguard series and all other Sabian models at Sabian.com. Hello and welcome again to Drummer Nation. I'm your host, Michael Vosbon, and this is show number 25, The Boys Are Back. Find out about that in a couple of minutes. First thing I want to talk about is my new digs. I've had a, a large studio that I sold off because I didn't need most of it. I had it from when I had my cymbal company. And in the process of learning to shoot video and do these kind of things, you go through a, a learning curve. Lots of different, do you use a camera, a camcorder? Do you use a DSLR? Do you use a webcam? What kind of lenses do you use? How about lighting? Is it uh, LED? Are you using soft boxes? microphones, audio, all has to come together and if you're working by yourself as I usually am there are a million ways to screw this up. So what I've done now is put a studio in my home where I can just walk in and turn everything on and begin shooting which is great. Now there are sacrifices made along the way for that. It may not be as crystal clear as some other gear I have, but I'm not going to shoot the whole thing and figure out I cut my head off or I had a guest that is too out of focus to use or can't hear the audio or any number of things. This I can control and do myself, so I'm digging it. This week I'm prepping for the Chicago Drum Show. I'm going up there to work with Classic Drummer Magazine and their offspring Classic Drummer Hall of Fame is a title sponsor of the show. So they're going to have me doing all kinds of interviews in a cafe booth, I think, and uh, hope to get some Drummer Nation work done there as well. Uh, anyway, that's always a fun show, and if you can make the hang, please, please do. You might notice I've got ads now. Sabian has come forth with some ads, and, there are, and we appreciate that, and there are some others in the, in, in, in the queue, and uh, they're called um, pre-rolls. Uh, I can set them up for you if you're interested in advertising on Drummer Nation. Uh, the, the price can't be beat, and you do get access to a lot of drummers, a lot of cool drummers all over the world. So my next show, The Boys Are Back, is an interview with my friend Ricky Rocket. Ricky Rocket has been the drummer in the band Poison for more than 30 years. And what's really of note is that they're back on tour after a long hiatus because Ricky was ill. He makes no bones about it. In fact, they announced from the stage that he is a stage four cancer survivor. So along the lines of Classic Drummer, once again, I did do an extensive interview, sit down interview with Ricky at the NAMM show that I encourage you to check out on Classic Drummer when it comes out. Um, you just have to give them an email address and everything there is free, so you can't go wrong with that. And they have been very nice to me. I've got a wonderful body of work accumulating over there that I'm proud of, where they've had me interview Sean Pelton and Peter Erskine and Jeff Hamilton and industry giants like Remo Belli, who sadly passed away, Johnny Craviato, again, may he rest in peace, um, Don Lombardi, thankfully still with us, <laughs> and um, other great luminaries, so I'm proud to be working for them and ch check that out when you can. Anyway, I caught up with Ricky in Atlanta backstage. This is very cool. If you like the trappings of rock and roll, we're on the tour bus 
back behind the venue, and I had Kevin with me, so there's a question in there from him. He's my son, many of you know from my uh, work with the civil companies. He was an integral part of that. So I guess that's all I have to say in introduction to this. Stick with us for Ricky Rocket coming up next on Drummer Nation. So, Ricky, the boys are back, huh? Boys are back. Boys are back. And the you original guys? Been? Yeah. Original guys. It's been a lot of fun so far. How many years were you down? Four years almost, I think. After touring, what, 25, 30 years straight? Yeah, 30 years. Yeah, this is our 30th year. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's kind of crazy. I mean, I, I was out there with Double City Angels doing stuff, but not Poison. Yeah, I mean, we had a few corporate gigs here and there, but not a full blown tour. I'm going to ask about them in a minute. The uh, Does it feel like, how did it feel going back into rehearsals again? It felt great. Uh, I mean, after the first two days, I felt at home. First day, it was like, whoa, can I do this? You know what I mean? And then, and now, I mean, it's like, I, I get up on stage and it fits like home. You know what I mean? I mean, it really is. A lot of people will say, you know, oh, another day at the office at the drum kit. It's like, no, another day at home. I was just wondering if you could uh, speak a little bit about uh, coming up in, in Hollywood in, in the 80s, and it was such a, uh, a hip scene for, for like a new style of music before it was everywhere. It was, it was this new thing that was, was cool and um, dangerous and uncertain and a uh, you know, whole volatile kind of scene. just wonder if you could talk about that. You know what? There was so much going on right then. Uh, the early part of the 80s was a lot like the, the 70s, okay? And I think we talked about this before where there was this mishmash, everyone's trying to figure it out. And I think we kind of got a little bit in a box by the late 80s and the, the early part of the 90s. They, everyone thought they had figured it out, okay? And was, but there was this thing where it was like this post-punk, like sort of post-new wave, like metal, but not, but, but glam. But I mean, nobody knew how to like make it work. and. Um, because we had just come out of this, all this electronica kind of stuff. And uh, kind of like now, you know what I mean? And then everybody was like yearning for organic rock and roll. And along came Quiet Riot, you know, and changed the game. And then came along Van Halen and changed the game even further and made a guitar hero there. And um, that opened the door for guys like us who've been waiting, you know, for the longest time to come out of the eaves and like, oh, yeah, see, this is what it's supposed to be, you know, and, uh, but, you know, it wasn't happening on the East Coast quite yet, you know, New York uh, was still pretty much a new wave of scene, the post-punk CBGBs kind of thing, and that, I, that was wonderful stuff, but it wasn't what we were doing, and the West Coast was a little bit at the head of the curve with the rock stuff, I mean, Motley Crue was coming out of there, Rack was coming out of there, those kinds of bands. But by the time we got there, they had thought that the scene had moved to a really heavy scene, and uh, you know, they didn't. Nobody wanted to sign us. Um, and so what we like what we did in Pennsylvania, you know, we created our own scene. We're like, okay, you know, we'll then play the game our way, and we literally created the scene in Hollywood. I think um, so. Poison wasn't just music; it was kind of a social movement a little bit at that time. Um, and, and I feel like we defined something there. It wasn't all good for you, but, <laughs> you know, it, uh, but we, we had it, we had sure had a lot of fun with it. So, but man, we'll talk about uncertainties. There, there's no guarantees in this business. There's no guarantees in life, period. And I've learned to wrap my head around that a little bit better. You know, you, uh, you wake up every day and you go, I can do everything in the world to take care of myself and I can walk out and get hit, you know. Or, you know, you see a homeless guy who doesn't take care of himself at all and he gets a physical and he has nothing wrong with him. I mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you just do the best that you can do and you plan as best as you can. I've always said, have your bags packed because you never know when your ship's going to come in. So keep yourself in a place where you're movable until you decide, hey, I'm not going to pursue this anymore. People always ask me, I should back up and say that people always ask me what my best advice for being a musician is, and, and that's what it is. If you, if you put yourself in a position where you have too many duties other than music, you can only really be a slave to one thing when it comes to music, and it has to be the music, um, then you 
probably are not going to succeed. And that's why there are so many mishmash pans because they, they have a car payment and a house payment and a, and a wife and kids and all those sorts of things. And once you have all that stuff, you got to make a certain amount of money. And guess what? This doesn't always pay that kind of money to float all those things. You know what I mean? Not at the beginning. I mean, we're in a very lucky position. Who isn't? We've been doing this for so long, but it's tough. It's, it's tough. So my advice, you didn't even ask me this question, but my advice to, to budding musicians is, you know, don't don't get married, don't have kids, don't get payments, you know, buy it, but pay everything off when you can pay it off, and I'm going to get killed for saying those things. Or, what do you mean don't get married, you know? It's, but I, I just mean to don't lock yourself into a place where you, you can't swim out to that ship when it comes in, because that's what you kind of have to do. Uh, it's 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 tough and it's even tougher now than it ever was I think so one kid. <laughs> <laughs> that's great now when you first started you guys really hit did you have any notion that it would still be this big this long I didn't uh, I mean especially in the mid 90s when you know things started to change um, I thought you know I had seen the end of it and uh, I, I couldn't participate in that what was happening because I didn't feel like I had been organically it made sense for me to, to go that direction. So I started making comic books, uh, something that I always wanted to do. And I said, I, I don't necessarily need to play right now, um, at least anything but just for fun, you know what I mean? And then uh, 2000, 1999, 2000 rolled around and we got asked to do a tour. I remember talking to Brett on the phone the night before the tickets went on sale. And I said, man, if the, if the ticket sales suck, that's, we're done. And uh, next morning, 8 o'clock, they started to just, I mean, by 10 o'clock, they were almost sold out of their first show. And I was like, we're back. So that was when it really marked, you know, marked that we were back. And that we not only were back, but like back to stay. Great. Now, doing these, you're still playing Monster Sheds and filling them up after all these years. Do you ever yearn for the old days rocking a small club? No, I do that with Devil City and I and I get plenty of it there. As a matter of fact, the guitar player Joe Koch is going to be here. Uh, he was with Collective Soul for like ten mm -hmm. years or so. Great guy. And uh, I mean, I, I love doing that gig too. It's different. It's a different kind of uh, dynamic, and uh, you know, but it's it's a blast. Well, tell us about the whole band. Uh, Devil City Angels. Mm -hmm. um, you know, right now we've had a little bit of a revolving door with bass players. We had Eric Brittingham. Uh, we had. Uh, you know, we just had Chuck Garrett from Alice Cooper's band play with us. And, of course, we had Ruby Sarzo step in for a bit. So we've had this little revolving door, which I don't like. Uh, it's the exact reason why I've never stepped outside of Poison, because I'm a group guy. I'm a band guy. You know, you get in, you know, you, you, you know, the drummer for the Doors is known as the drummer from the Doors forever, you know, or, or Charlie Watts with the Stones, you know, or whatever, you know, or Joey Kramer or Earl Smith, you know. And, and I, I don't like these mix and match bands that are happening, right? There's too much, but everybody's just trying to work, and I understand that. But I just think there's something special about sticking it out and being like this little gang. So when we have a revolving door of any musicians, it's like, ah, you know, I want a band that people can hang their hat and go, yeah, 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 that's that's my guys, you know what I, I mean? I, yes, I do. I think a lot of great musicians can come together and make great music spontaneously, but there's nothing like the sound of a band. It has a sound, it's that band. And especially from the drum chair, it has a lot to do with finding that sound. Well, great players don't equal great music, uh, unfortunately. Uh, bad players don't equal good music or bad music. I mean, it's really a dynamic is, is what happens. I would rather have a very dedicated player that knows our 12, 14, 18, 20 songs upside down, backwards and forwards than having a maestro that, you know, doesn't really pay attention to all those details. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, you know, every, every pair of jeans isn't created the same. You know, the devil's in the details and, uh, and everything in life. And, and, and with art, it's finally honed by certain individuals who play together over a long time. And it's, it's, a, it's a sophistication and nuance that you can't really write down. No. You know? It's hard yeah, to define. No, you it's can't. obvious when you hear it. Right, right. And it's like, you know, to me, when rock is too perfect and too polished, it doesn't make you nervous, and, and, it, and it should make you a little nervous. I mean, the thing about the Rolling Stones, for example, is that it just feels like it's going to fall off the edge any second, and it doesn't. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just that, oh my God, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? You know, the tension and the beat. 
the tension, the tension. And and uh, I'll tell you what it is with with our band is that I tend to lay a little bit behind the beat. If you listen to, if you could listen to the click on a record with me, it's almost like a flam. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm always just that little bit behind, and CC pushes. So there's this thing that happens. It's dynamic tension with the beat. It's why none of us as musicians will work the shit at Guitar Hero. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it absolutely. Had, it had nothing it's to crazy. do with playing music. No, right, exactly. <laughs> um, how are you feeling out on the road? Everything going well? Is I, it, is it a pleasure good. for everybody to be together? I, I think so, yes. Uh, yes, it is. Um, and uh, health-wise, I'm feeling good at the moment. And, uh, you know, fingers crossed there. Uh, I get dry, of course, real, very dry. In fact, I'll take a sip of water in a second. So what are you rocking up there for Tubbs? Um, I'm doing a DW kit. Um, it is a uh, uh, cherry um, kit. Um, we're doing, it's a lacquer um, that we're doing this year. And I'm doing something interesting. All the toms are 9 inch deep. Uh, I started with an 8, 10, 12, uh, 14, and 16, but I kind of deleted the 8. And I'm just using the 10 and the 12 right now. But it's cherry mahogany or the interior. And uh, I mean, the the kit just, it's probably one of the best sounding kits that we've done. Oh, it's and very warm, right? Very, very warm, but but it's like immediate, you know. It, it's been a little temperamental outside the last uh, couple of days. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it seems like by the second song we're settled in nice, you know. I think the kit sounds great. I'm making my sound man very happy, and I've done something different this year. 15-inch hi-hats. Never thought I would do it. I'm like, I don't want some big sloshy things up there. The separation, my sound man is loving. Uh, there's something really cool about it. I'm using all the paragons right now. Separation as to where it lays in the mix sonically? Yeah, sonically. Right. Um, and uh, I just never thought I'd, I'd go, if anything, 13s. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I'm using a 13-inch snare. I love how it just sits right in the middle there. and you know. Um, but uh, the, the paragons, New York Peart stuff, I mean, it's so musical sounding i'm just in love with those symbols and love them it's great well it's great catching up with you again as always um can't wait to hear it again you know i came up as a jazz musician and, and i just love poison concerts man because they're just so damn Thank much you. fun you know well you're gonna love it tonight because it's got like a you know we have 60 minutes so we cram a lot into that 60 minutes a lot's gonna fly at you in 60 minutes and uh there's some of that dynamic tension, you know what I mean, that, that you get uh, in a different way. Uh, but, you know, we don't rush the songs or anything like that. I have a little iPad back there, and I got my click going. That way I keep everybody. My band's very emotional, you know. They see the crowd, they start going. It's like, guys, you know, it's my job to... Come and, home to daddy. Yeah. And that dynamic tension we were talking about doesn't mean the beat is moving around. Let's be clear about that. That's right. It, it, Absolutely. It's, it's the nuance of the space inside the band amongst the musicians. And, and I'll tell you at who the understood. Yeah, you're still holding it down. You, you're absolutely right. And I'll tell you who understood that more than, uh, not more than anybody, but so well is Mark Lang. And we've never had the pleasure to work with Mark Lang. But, uh, you, you know, he would move stuff around like that. You know, I was talking to Def Leppard and mm -hmm. the Cars and other people who worked with him. Uh, my favorite producer was Bruce Fairburn, God rest his soul. I've learned more from him. Any other experience was flesh and blood. How to record? Crop. That's another show you save me for later. Okay? Yes, yes. I'll Some other time. And I love to time. record. So yeah, and I know you know so much about it. Well, break a leg tonight, man. And thank you very rock much. On. It's great to see you. All right. Thanks a lot. This is your host, Michael Vosbein, and I want to thank our friends at Atlanta Pro Percussion, Danette Classic Drums, Sabian Cymbals, and Classic Drummer Magazine. We'll see you again in two weeks. <laughs>